Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Norman from Sportshade TV here. We're going to be going through the gains and losses of the bottom eight sides of last year. I'm joined by BKR Sports. Welcome to the page. Thank you very much for coming back. Well, for me, uh, allowing me to come back, man. I'm, I'm keen for this one to go through the gains and losses of all the team. And uh, yeah, no, it should be fantastic. We've obviously already spoken about all the, um, the the teams and where we think they're going to be. So now it's good to get into the nooks and crannies of, of the players yeah. that are actually there. We're gonna we're gonna grade everyone from probably like A to F. Um, we'll, we'll get started with the with the West Tigers, which um they get a they get an A for me. Um, but we'll go through the gains and losses and then explain our, our reasoning real quick. Okay, guys. So the gains we got John Bateman, Sione Fainu, um, David Klemmer, Coruscant, Justin Matamua, um, Isaiah Papali'i, um, who else they got here? Will Smith, Fanua Charlie Paul. Pole. They're all they're all re-signed. I feel. Um, yeah. And then we've go, we'll go through their losses. For Manu Brown, Luke Garner, Oliver Gilda, Jackson Hastings, Luciano Leilua, Jacob Little, Jock Madden, Thomas Michele, um, Zane Musgrove, Tyron Peachy, James Roberts retired, and, and Tamo is off as well. And same as uh, Toalangi. So um, some fair losses there. I'm, I'm happy to start me with the Tigers. I, I've looked into their gains, and I just think that's just fantastic. Bateman, Coruscant, even even Clemmer, a bit of experience does well there. Papali'i, very good. Um, but they have lost a fair few, a fair few players. So I'd be interested to see how they go. But it, it's kind of good, fresh new faces in, and great faces too. I'll give them, I'll give them an A, A minus, only because I feel like they've lost some relatively important players. Yeah, I think that overall, man, they've they've made some pretty good signings in regards to the forward pack. The back line is what worries me the most. Uh, you know, they got like a, a Ferrari in the front, uh, but in the back, it's just uh, you know, it's a, it's a Kia there, man. Um, I, I don't know. It's just that I I do get worried in regards to lack of signings in certain areas, but their forwards, man, David Clemmer, John Bateman, Apisa Corsell, you know, um, Isaiah like Papali'i, fantastic signings there that really will turn this club around in regards to the go forward. It's just about putting that together, and they're losing Jackson Hastings, which really does suck for me that's a huge loss for them they've really backed in on uh luke brooks again where even though every single person on the planet keeps saying don't do that garner's a big loss um but yeah they've made some good signs too so i'm gonna go with a overall i will go with an i'll go with an a minus as well and the only reason i'm giving the minus is because they didn't look at the backs they, really too yeah. much they didn't look at the backs for me also why, why it's an a minus is for Manu brown i thought he's perfect perfect hook off the bench like literally perfect. Jackson Hastings losing him after he provided so much direction was a bit, bit off putting as well. And uh, Luciano Leilu and Luke Garner, good back rowers. But um, I guess we we move on, and um, this time we'll be going through the the Warriors. So with the Warriors, they've gained Mitch Barnett, Jackson Ford, uh, Otu Otu Kanikina Kepu, Valangi Kepu, Tamari Martin, Luke Metcalf, CNK from Canberra, Nia Kore, Dylan Walker from Manly, and Braden Williami. Um, we'll go through their losses as well. Ewan Aitken, Dejan Arce, Leighton Finu, Jackson Frey, Eliza Katoa, Matt Lodge obviously released the Roosters during the season. Janimous Lou re re released as well. Jack Murchie, Ben Murdoch, Masilla, Cody Nikarima, Aaron Penne. Um, and then they got a few from the um, from the bottom 30 who, who didn't really play last year. And obviously the Reese Walsh moved to, to the Brisbane Broncos. So a fair few losses there. Uh, do you want to kick us off with this one? Uh, yeah, it's a, it's a tough one, really, because they've really looked into sorting out their 5'8 fullback position. They originally signed Chance Neil Clock, started to play fullback, but then they eventually signed Mario Martin. Uh, so, you know, it's decent there. That's fine. But it's not really a crucial situation to have sorted. Like, okay, cool, you got got Mario Martin there. But I definitely would have been looking to kind of replace Shawnee J, who's getting on now. And um, I, I needed a little bit more spark from this, realistically, uh, you know, Luke Metcalf plays in the 5'8". They've really just solidified one area. The Kepu brothers are going to be future, not really necessarily now. Uh, Mitch Barnett, he'll be, and Nia Kore, the back line, back rowers and whatnot. But overall, I think it's like, I think it's okay. I'm going to go with just a straight up C mark. I think it's a pass because they did sort out their fullback role and they do have depth now in that area. But it is really only one area and losing, you know, you and Aiken, Matthew Lodge was also a big one, even though that was an absolute shambles. Elias Katoa is a huge one of the storm that they have lost there. Um, and yeah, overall, I think they've lost a lot of, a lot of depth, but there's some players here that you'd be okay with. Dylan Walker also to come off the bench in number 14, which is a, a bit of depth there for that, uh, that nine role or halves role if ne necessary. Yeah, for sure. Pretty average. I'll give them a C plus only because I feel like they've released players who they didn't really make the most of. So it was good. At least they've cleared up some cap space there. Losing Aitken was a big one. I feel like he was quite integral towards the back end of the season, especially. 
You mentioned Katoa Storm. Matt Lodge, that was shambles, but thank you very much as a Roosters fan. Um, in terms of <laughs> in terms of the gains, though, like having someone like Mitch Barnett and Ia Corey just slot right in. I think Luke Metcalf is a talented player. We'll see how tomorrow Martin goes. Not too sure there. Jackson Ford's not bad at all. I feel like he was just at the wrong club, so hopefully him with a fresh start will be good. And and CMK, if he can stay at the back, Sean Zinkel cooks that. I think he, he's a great talent. Um, also, Dylan Walker off the bench. I feel like they've got a little, not too much spark, but like enough to look better than what they were last year. That's why I'll give them a C plus. But um, we move mm-hmm. on to the to the Newcastle Knights because we're going from 16th all the way to 8th. And Newcastle Knights finished third last last year. So we're going to go through them. They've signed Adam Elliott, Tyson Gamble, Jackson Hastings, Jack Hetherington, Greg Marzu from the Titans. So far, the gains are ridiculous uh, for a club like Newcastle Knights. Didn't expect them to, to sign that well. The losses... Mitch Barnett, Jake Clifford, Tex Hoy, David Clemmer, Edric Lee, Milford, Duraya Mamasoa, Chris Randall, and um, Pas- Pasami Salo, and Soase Su. So, a couple of losses there. I feel like half the losses, probably more, probably three quarters of the losses, totally fine. Good to get rid of them. Clear up some cap space. Start fresh. The gains, I've always been a fan of Adam Elliott. I know Offfield's gotten himself into some trouble, but I think as a ball playing 13, I think he's really good. Um, I think he's quite underrated at 13. I'm not saying he's fantastic, but he definitely doesn't get recognition he deserves. Tyson Gamble's good, just don't know where they're going to play him. When I say good, he's nothing fantastic, but it could be what they need. Jackson Hastings, everyone knows, everyone on our page um, knows that I, I like Jackson Hastings, especially his attacking footy. So keen to see what he can do for the Newcastle attack, especially with Elliott at 13 if he plays there. Jack Hedrington, he's a hothead, but could be the the, the new version of Clemmer there. So um, I think that that's a straight replacement for for Clemmer. Um, and Greg Marzi from Gold Coast Titans, not sure what your opinions on that is, but I think Marzi was a great great player um i feel like he, he would do a job at newcastle nothing special but he would do he would do a job there so i'll give him i'll give him a b yeah i'm looking exactly at the b mark i think that there are positive signings here i i think that i'm more confident in them this year maybe i think they're probably going to finish in a very similar position as we spoke about before but uh, i think that these signings are better for them at even you know longer term as well not just this year uh greg Matthew. Terrible defensively, but unbelievable. Probably for me, the best attacking winger in the game, but also could be the worst defensive winger in the game. That's the issues with Greg. I love Greg. I know Greg. Uh, fantastic bloke. I wish nothing but the best for him. Um, but the Knights aren't exactly known as a defensive team, and he's not got great defense as it is. So I do worry in that regard for him. As you said, Hetherington, yeah. Um, Jackson Hastings, he is a decent halfback. You know, like he's fine. He, he's fine. Um, I think that he's definitely an improvement based off what they had last year. Yeah, that's for sure. Um, and then it's just, yeah, it comes down to the Tyson Gamble's not going to play. Like it'll be Cam Pong in a six. And he'll if he goes to the fullback, then you might even see, uh, you might well, you might see Gamble get a crack, or you might see uh, Muff Palangi also get a crack in that six role as well. So yeah. look, overall, they have lost some. Uh, David Clemmer is a huge loss. I will say that. David Clemmer is an absolutely massive loss for them. Um, Stats-wise, just an absolute machine. But overall, yeah, I'm going to go exactly a B2. There is some positivity there. There we go. Perfect. I, um, I'd um i love to see um Gabriel have a crack at 14 just to see if he can come on and do anything special, provide a spark, because we didn't really see that at Brisbane. Um, I'd like to see him at 14. We'll see, see what happens. But next up, Gold Coast Titans, your team, obviously. I'm, um, I'm loving their gains. I've... I don't have too much to say about their losses. I'll, I'll go through everything. Kieran Foran, Chris Randall, Aaron Shop or Shup, uh, Joe Simpson, Sam Verrills, Thomas Weaver. They're, that's the, that's their games. We'll go through their losses real quick. Herman Essiesi, Jermaine Asako, Sam Lizone, uh, Isan Masters, Greg Mizu, we just oh. mentioned, Kevin Proctor, Will Smith, Corey Thompson retired, and uh, Jared Wallace is off, off to the Dolphins. Uh, you can start on this one considering they're your boys. Every single loss there is a positive for the club. Every single loss there going through that. There, is, Besides Corey Thompson, who retired, uh, it wasn't a, a, a loss effectively. He was still a very solid player. But yeah. every other single loss there is okay. Like, I'm really, I'm actually quite happy for, for most of it. Um, the game's incredible. We needed a better spine. Kieran Foran into the six. Beautiful. Thanks for coming. Uh, obviously, we've never had a really good number nine. Sam Verrill's into the nine. Thanks for coming. Uh, Tommy Weaver is actually a youth part coming through the system there. Uh, yeah. That's more depth than the halves. He's a very nice little play coming through. Played New South Wales um, in the under 19. I, I think it was. Like, yeah. Yeah, yeah, he was very good. Uh, Joe Stimson, obviously, a bit of depth there for the forwards. When we've got a great four pack, Shop into a position that of need in that centre, and Chris Randall as a backup number nine to Sammy Verrills. I think that the Titans have made an a, a, a exceptional amount of signings for a team that didn't need to do anything in the forwards really. And overall, like we've got 
JC and Brimdog Millionaire is that fullback. You know, you've got um, some fantastic players there. And obviously, this isn't a part of this, but a Lafayette and Pereira coming in the wing. We haven't needed anything in regards to the wingers because we've got actually depth coming through there. I actually genuinely believe, for me, I'm going to give this in regards to the specific needs that the Titans did need to get back to being a, a quality team. I'm giving them an A. Well, I, I thought I was going to surprise you with, with an A as well, but um, clearly you've gone with it. Uh, it doesn't sound too biased, to be honest, because from an outside perspective, obviously I'm not a Titans fan. They've gotten rid of players that they didn't need and they've gained players that they do need. And that's what you need to do in, in recruitment, really. When you're recruiting for a club, you need to get exactly what you need and get rid of what you don't need. Clear up cap, cap space and bring in players that are actually going to get you up the, up on the ladder. That's what they've done. Kieran Foran will provide stability, a lot of experience in the halves, will guide Sexton's game too. Chris Randall, a backup nine who actually played a lot of games last season, so he's, he becomes more than a backup. He's more of like a backup with actually games under his belt. Obviously, Sam Verrill's top number nine. I'm actually sad to to, um, to lose him as a Roosters fan. It's not that first try in the 2019 final. So underrated. Fielding for Jake Friend when we needed him to and did did more than just the job. Obviously, you've got that young gun coming through too. You know, perfect to gain him. Stimson, mm-hmm. you know, not sure how much he will play. I feel like he should have played more at the Dogs than what he did, but... You know, great depth, nevertheless. And Aaron Shop, what a great defensive center he was last year. So um, I've got to give... And that's the, the biggest back. issue as well, just in regards to what you just said in regards to Shop. Like, the defense is the, the biggest issue with the yeah. Gold Coast as a club forever, not just last year, forever. So it's great to see they've gone a lot more defensive, especially with the likes of Verrills and Shop there. Man, I'm, I'm, I'm excited. I am. I am excited. Yeah. I didn't mind Sam Lizone. Not sure what your thoughts were, but I thought he was average. Maybe a bit more time, a bit more time okay. in reserve grade here and there, and then and get him in a couple, like maybe a little stint off the bench. I didn't think he was the worst player ever. And Greg Marzio, I feel like that that was a pretty sad loss because I, I I rate him. But apart from that, there, there's still losses that needed to occur, like you said. So nothing. I'll just say just quickly here before we do jump up before you. Oh, you said you'd give it an A, but just put quickly every single one of those guys who were lost, except for maybe Greg. Uh, and Corey Thompson, every single one of those guys that we lost is also part of a, a cultural thing that I found with the club. Like there's just a, there was a difference of opinion between a few of those boys and yeah. the other playing groups. So yeah, no, I'm very happy with the losses that we had for the most part. I love Greg and I love Cor- Corsa, but yeah, perfect. Um, next up, we'll go with the Canterbury Bankstown Bulldogs. The gains for Manu Brown from the Tigers we mentioned earlier, Brandon Clark, Andrew Davey, Sam Hughes. Viliami Kikau, Reid Marnie, Joseph O'Neill, Franklin Pele, Hayes Perham, Jacob Preston, and Ryan Sutton. Their losses, Corey Allen, Matt Dury, Matt Dufty, Jack Hedrington, Josh Jackson retired, Jeremy Marshall King's off to the Dolphins, Brent Naden's gone, Aaron shop has gone, Joe Stimson's gone, and Paul Vaughan. I will start here with the with the Bulldogs. Brown is a great signing. Andrew Davies is a great signing. Kikau, Reid Marnie, Perham, even Franklin Pele is, is massive. They've done some great work. Ryan Sutton, quite underrated for Canberra Raiders. I'll give the Bulldogs an A. I would love to give them an A plus, but I feel like getting rid of certain players, I feel like they could have made the most of, of Corey Allen and they and they didn't really. Jeremy Marshall King was also great for them. They they got rid of got rid of him, but I guess he was replaced, so it kind of kind of adds up. Getting rid of Aaron Short, that, that still really confuses me. Really, really yes, confuses yeah. me. Um Paul Vaughan, not the best player, mm-hmm. but he was on peanuts. Why wouldn't you just leave him there on the bench? Not too sure. I feel like Josh Jackson also retired a year too early. I would have loved him to see a bit more success next next season, but um, I'll give him I'll give him an A. I think this is a very difficult one because uh, yes, they have improved, but they also haven't really bolstered up in specific areas. Like I think that. Uh, and I spoke about this with a video on my channel about Hayes Perham. I think that he has an opportunity to potentially go into that fullback spot if Jake Avrilo doesn't perform, but that's also not necessarily like, it's not like they've gone out and specifically signed him for that big, big reason. Um, and the seven, you know, is still the biggest issue there. The dogs with Kyle Flanagan, you know, that's the, that's the real biggest issue for me. So, and he's off contract this year. So maybe he'll have a contract year, but you know, I look, I like the signings, of the dogs, it puts them into the right, it gets them in the right movement. They're in the right process. Um, I still think 2024 is the year they make the eight, not 2023, uh, but they are putting the right kind of movements together. I am, however, going to give them a B plus. I'm going to give them a B plus and maybe even an A minus. Actually, you know what? I will go. No, you know what? I am going to go harsh here and I'm going to say B plus just because there are still positions in their team that still leave me concerned, especially the fact that they've got. A gr- uh, for me, they've got a really good forward pack. They do have a great forward pack. 
However, the back line, similar to the Tigers in a way, they're very similar to the Tigers here. Great forward pack, but the back line, there is issues still there. Adokar, fantastic. Burton, fantastic. But yeah. you look at the centers, you look at the other winger, you know, you look at the fullback and you look at that seven. It's just there is a few holes here that still need to be sorted out. So I'll go B+. Plus. I'm looking forward to seeing what... Uh, oh, well, they had Jake and Kras on the wing, so maybe you forget the wing there because I think, yeah. think he's good. But the centers, right. the halfback, fullback, that's the issue there. So B+, plus, B plus. and I think 2024 you get in. Okay, I'm going with an with an A. I feel like the backline is pretty good. They've got some few young players coming through. I've heard a bit of inside inside uh, whispers as well. Oh, body so, and stuff, yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm hoping hoping the backline is as good as what I, what I've heard um, about people coming through and, and how they're going to line up. But yeah, they, they would they would have had an A plus for me if they if they got a halfback, but they didn't. So I'll give them an A. I don't I don't want to be too harsh because I feel like they got rid of plays they needed to as well. Um, mm. Moving on now, we'll go to mainly Sea Eagles, Ben Condon, Zach Fulton, Cooper Johns, Nathaniel Roach, and Kelmai Tuolangi. Now their losses, Andrew Davies, mm. Yoni Fainu, Kieran Foran, George Tafua, Dylan Walker, all those losses outweigh the gains. It's a it's a oh, it's a D. Bro, this is an F. Like I'm, <laughs> I'm looking at I'm this being this polite. Is... I'm being polite with the D. It, it could well and truly be an F. It, it's nothing's exciting there for me. I mean, losing Andrew Davies, who is quite good. Sioni Fainu, he's fantastic. Kieran Foran. George Tafua is obviously, you know, he's done and dusted. Dylan Walker, mm, but just no, nothing exciting in the gains. For a team that, that almost finished in the bottom four, nothing exciting in the gains there. Yeah, look, Dylan Walker is a good utility at the very least. Um, you know, can come on in any position. Kieran Foran's a huge loss, but that was because they were, they were banking in on Josh Schuster. Uh, whether that's going to work out or not, that's another question, but... Man, like, what signing there can you click? Can you say is a good signing, really? Like, coming to Alungi, maybe for the back row, but still, what is going on here? I'm giving them an F. I think, it, yeah, D is it, is uh, given at least positivity. That they, they, they've lost such players that are in need, and they've they've not really signed anybody of note. So, yeah, I'm going straight up F, bro. Straight up F. Yep, fair enough. We'll go with the uh, the dragons next, and look, the dragons. It's, it's another tough one. Jacob Little, oh, Nick, Nick Tosso, Michael Molo, Ben Murdoch Masilla, Zane Musgrove, and then their losses Daniel Alvaro, George Burgess retired, uh, Hawasa Famasuli, Jackson Ford, Jack G- Gos- Gosiewski? I'm not sure how to pronounce uh, it. Gosh- Gosiewski, Gosiewski, something like similar, yeah. Andrew McCulloch retired, Josh McGuire is gone, Tarek Sims is gone. Look, they got rid of some players that they kind of needed to get rid of, but apart from that, n- nothing, nothing going for them at all. This is. For this a club that needs to have something going for them, <laughs> for yeah. one of the biggest yeah. clubs that needs to have that. Exactly. This is a, this is a D minus for me. It would have I, I would have given D like Manly, but but D minus only because they've had two players retired, George Burgess and Andrew McCulloch, who, who were pretty good for them last season. So the fact that they haven't really been replaced well enough, and they lose Tariq Sims, it's it's a D minus. Yeah, I'm definitely going. I'm going to say D, uh, and the only reason I say D and not D minus is because I think that at least Jacob Little provides a bit of depth off that hooker position. Where well, he's probably going to be in the nine, and Jaden Sullivan might play nine, or he might play in the halves, or he may even play the fullback. You never know; he can play multiple positions. That guy, um, Jacob Little, is actually probably a signing that, although seems average from the outset, like looking at from the outside in, I think that might actually end up being an okay signing for them. Michael Molo, Murdoch Basilo, Zay Musgrove, and Louis Tosso. Like, what's going on here? Like, this is the same thing we see every single year. It's like an Aaron Wood situation again. Why are you signing these kind of guys? It makes no sense. They're not in a rebuild because they're signing players that no one... It's just not... It's not a thing. It's not a thing, Dragons. You're making me lose my mind. I've done this for the second video in a row now. I'm losing my goddamn mind looking at your team, Dragons. Stop it. Get off my face. D, move on. Muppets. Yeah, let's, let's move on. Your the fans v- deserve v- better. V- your fans deserve better. On their fans... They rock up every home game, every away game for a merger club to have fans who are so loyal and passionate. It's just unbelievable. They they really do deserve better. I, I'll second I love how you just throw that merger club thing in there. <laughs> <laughs> I still want to take oh, a little, little stab at them, Dragons fans. They there are a merger are. club. Um, but we'll um, we'll go with the Brisbane Broncos, the last team who finished in this. So they finished uh-huh. ninth, so they're the last team we're going to go through. Broncos, uh, their gains. Logan Bayliss, Jock Madden, Ethan Kwai Ward, uh, Tyson Smoothie, Reese Walsh. And now their losses, Tyson Gamble, Zach Hosking, Jermaine Asako, Ryan James retired, uh, Reese Kennedy's gone, Brenko Lee's gone, Tamari Martin, David Mead also retired, Tessa New and Jake Turpin. Out of their losses, players that I feel like they should have kept, probably Zach Hosking, they definitely should have kept him. Uh, he looked good, only played a couple games. Jake Turpin, he should have probably stayed as well. And then you look at their gains and I don't see anything standing out like, oh, wow, that's good. That's going to take him somewhere. Reese Walsh coming back, 
I think that's not a good decision. I, I know a lot of people think, oh, yeah, Reese Walsh, Reese Walsh, but I don't think it's a good decision. I think it's going to backfire bad. That's my bold prediction for the year. I don't think Reese Walsh back to the Broncos is a good move whatsoever. I'll give them a, a C minus only because they need to push for the A and they choked real hard last year. So they've got like a lot of confidence in their initial squad to only sign, you know, Reese Walsh as one big name. It's probably their only big name signing at all. Um, and losing Zach Hosking and Jake Turpin were really bad when when they, you know, felt like they stuck it through all right last season. Um, or Turpin the season before. So C C minus for me. What do you think? Yeah, I probably agree. There's no way I'm going to put them in a fail because at least they did sign Reese. I think Reese is a very 50-50. I don't know which way I want to go with him just yet because I think the Broncos are a better, a way better defensive team than the Warriors are despite their, you know, choke at the end of the season last year. But uh, I think the Broncos will be, might be able to get a bit more defense out of Reese, even though he's a smaller body. That's the biggest issue. Uh, but that is the only signing of any note. Tyson Smoothie, Madden, Bayless, and, and Quay Ward, uh, you know, what's going on there as well, similar to the Dragons. But the Broncos aren't, as, aren't in anywhere as near as much need as the Dragons are, so I'm not really comparing that. Um, yeah, their losses aren't huge. Obviously, you would love to have had Tamari Martin as a bit of depth there. And also, you know, look, maybe, yeah, Turpin, because I don't think that Billy Walters is a guy. Like, I, I probably would have preferred yeah. Turpin to stay there. But overall, they're not really that big of losses, man, uh, I will say. They're all... They're all okay. So I'll go I'll go with a I'm gonna go a C on the basis that I believe that Reese will be a little bit better than I guess what you just said, even though that's your bold call. It is a bold yeah, call, but I think it's it's okay too. I can I can definitely see a world where he completely and utterly fails. And and then you might see you might see Selwyn Cabo or, or Happy Farmer go to the fullback at some stage. But overall, I'm happy to go with C. You're all Muppets though in Brisbane. However, I will give you my honest opinion and I'm going C. C. There we go. There we've got it. That's the bottom eight done and dusted in terms of their gains and losses for, for the upcoming season. Thank you for your time, Big House Sports. And um, make sure you guys subscribe and like our videos and subscribe to Big House Sports page as well. We've got the top eight, the gains and losses for the top eight sides of last year coming out soon as well. Joshua Agent will jump on and we'll, we'll get that done and dusted. Big House Sports, you got any, any updates or any news before we close off? Just slapping down the team makers. Obviously, you were on one of them for the halfback uh, where we went through all the halfbacks and analyzed them uh, from best to worst. Uh, you know, we stream every single game over the channel, get around it, and I will see you guys at the charity match because I will be there. I can't tell you what I'm doing just yet. You probably will know what I'm doing, but I can't officially announce it just yet. So we'll be at the game, and uh, I'm really excited for the charity match. That's right. We can't wait, guys. Saturday, the 25th of February at Lidcombe Oval. Get down there. Tickets, the link's in our bio, on our Instagram, on our TikTok. You can find it absolutely anywhere. Tickets are online only, guys. Online only. You can't buy at the gate. So make sure you get your tickets online. And if you can't make it for whatever reason, or you live interstate, you live far, far away, whatever, there will be a live stream on our YouTube. If you keep watching our videos, keep liking, keep subscribing, we'll get there. Thanks, everyone. Thanks for being in our sports. Have a good one. Hey, where's it, boys?